Welcome to episode 6 of A Historian Knits. I am coming to you from Cincinnati, Ohio, where I live with my husband, our daughter, and our dog. And my name is Vanessa. Um, this is mostly going to be a knitting podcast with some other kind of craftiness thrown in every once in a while. Where you can find me? You can find me on Instagram as A Historian Knits, on Ravelry as A Historian Knits. Um, where else? Oh, we have a Ravelry uh, group as A Historian Knits podcast group. And you'll find um, all kinds. You'll find the show notes there, which are also going to be at the bottom here in YouTube, um, in the the drop bar down thingy there. <laughs> That's it's going to give you all of the patterns that I'm working on. And if I buy things online, it's also going to provide you links to their either their Etsy shops or their websites. So all of that information is down there. And you can also reach me through email uh, at ahistorianits at gmail.com. So I think I've got all the administrative stuff out of the way. We do have a 100 subscriber giveaway, which is really exciting. We have over 100 people now that are part of this podcast. Uh, we will be doing that over at the acquisitions section because my daughter Amelia wanted to help with that. So if you wanted to find out if you won the giveaway on Ravelry, go go kind of skip ahead. I put timestamps in the, the down bar as well. You can kind of skip ahead to the acquisitions portion of this episode. So first we have some finished objects. The first pattern I'm going to show you today is a pattern by Andy Satterland and I am wearing it <laughs> and it is the blaster and it was basically done last time I podcasted I just didn't have the buttons so these are like mother of pearl buttons. Uh, the yarn is a Sunseeker Cascade Yarns um, See if I have the shade number in there. It is actually color 10. It is um, a cotton um, acrylic and kind of metallic yarn blend. So I will get up and kind of show you what this looks like first. So it's kind of a cropped sweater and has the, this kind of detailing all around the whole body of it. So that is the sweater. Um, this was my first sweater ever, so it's it's very exciting. Um, I learned a lot from the sweater. Uh, I learned how to pick up stitches. I learned how to put buttons on. All of these things were on you to me, so it was a fun experience. Um, there are a couple of things, obviously, um, I messed up on this sweater, which is fine. You know, um, it's a learning process, right? So I first thing was picking up the underarms. That was really tricky, especially right in the bottom where the armpits are. Um, they're not entirely clean. This one's a little better. Kind of see how I picked up the stitches there. Um, and again, I think it needs another block. Just kind of see some of the laddering here on the arms, but it's a whole other story. And then this one was probably the sloppy one. I don't know if you can see that. I didn't do a great job there. So, you know, lesson learned. Try to be a little bit more careful next time of how I pick up stitches. I don't like what happened under here. But nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to be like staring underneath my armpit. At least I hope not. That would be really strange. But I like it. Um, another thing I messed up on is the button band. I put the button bands on the wrong side. And I couldn't figure out what was going on with the directions. I couldn't understand it. Like, so I ended up, I mean, I ended up working. It looks fine for the most part. Um, but I did the wrong, the button's on the wrong side. It is what it is. I did sew on the buttons. I, this was the first time I had ever done that. Uh, my friend Melissa helped me. Thank you, Melissa. So I'm going to show you the, she kind of did like this little ribbon. She helped me do this ribbon in here. And again, it's not perfect. But this is basically adding a little bit more stability for the buttons. So I got this fabric at Joann's. It's like little hummingbirds. So that kind of matches the color. And if I want to, I guess if I want to leave it open, like just adds a little bit of interest. So there's that. So, um, oh, the yarn. So I was trying to, I wanted to wear this on the podcast today. And I was trying to figure out something to wear with it. And I noticed in my closet, I don't really have a whole lot to wear with this color. 
Um, so I did find this like summer dress that I have that matches pretty well. So I would be able to wear this with this particular cardigan. But don't really have anything else that matches with this yarn. So lesson learned, um, try to find more things that I would be able to wear with the stuff that I already have. Um, this yarn was really pretty. I really liked the, the glitter and the shine and the color was very kind of summery beachy. But definitely have to be more mindful of my choices in terms of yarn color, especially with pieces like this that I hope to get a lot of use out of and, and wear with a lot of different outfits. So there's that. Second thing is that I'm not entirely happy with the yarn. I think this yarn would be great for children's sweaters because um, it's pretty, you know, it's cotton and it's acrylic so you can throw it in the wash and everything else. But it feels like a towel. <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing a towel. Um, it's not necessarily soft um, and I feel like it just feels like a towel. Like I don't know how else to describe it other than it feels like a towel. So I'm not entirely happy with the yarn choice for this particular pattern or this particular garment, but you know, you learn, live and learn. Um, I will be wearing it. Um, it's not gonna, you know, I'm very proud of it. I actually finished a sweater, so I'm very proud of that. But, you know, lesson learned. I'm not gonna make a cardigan out of cotton anytime soon. Um, so there it is. There's the cardigan, right? Yay! And I'm happy with it, how it came out. I'll definitely, I love the pattern, I should say that. I love, love, love the pattern. I will definitely do it again, um, but just with another yarn, obviously. So there's that. That's the first finished object. My second finished object you saw kind of as a work in progress last time. And I wanted to get it finished because I want to be able to start wearing it, although it's still not quite uh, cold enough. It's It kind of reaches reached the 70s this week. So it's not quite kind of a thicker, you know, kind of uh, shawl to be wearing at this point in time. So it's not weather to be wearing this kind of shawl is what I meant to say. There we go. So this is, um, you saw this last time, this is half of it. And this is the Color Field Shawl by Kempere. So it's completed. Yay. So there it is. I'm showing you how big it is. It's kind of my win wingspan. Um, I'm about 5'4", so this kind of C reaches both of my hands. So it's about that big. It's about mm, 18, 19 inches deep. So the colors are, this is a um, colorway by Kempere. I wanted to get one of her yarns to be able to use for this particular project because it's her design. This is Lydia in the DK base, and I believe both of these are 100% Superwash Merino. Um, and then the black is just a Madeline Tosh, uh, one of a kind, just a black color in their DK as well. So this was actually um, a pretty fast knit. Um, I really enjoyed it until I got to the, the ribbing. <laughs> so it was like two inches of slip, kind of the slip ribbing. So it took a while. <laughs> And it's in black, so probably can't even see it very well. But yeah, so it was really difficult to work at night because I couldn't really see it very well because it was black yarn and you know, the lighting wasn't so great. The lighting's not really great in our house anyway. So it took took me a while to get the ribbing done on this piece. Um, I did a new cast off, at least new to me cast off, that the pattern recommended. It's an Icelandic cast off, so it basically looks like a garter edge on here. See it? So it's basically like a garter edge. Um, it's supposed to be a stretchy bind off, but I don't know if I, I don't know what I did, but it's not stretchy at all. Um, it's actually it seems pretty tight. So I'm kind of disappointed in terms of something. I must have messed up something in how I was doing the, the bind off. Maybe I just wasn't using enough yarn. I don't know what it was, but it's a little tighter than I would have liked. But other than that, I really like it. That's the wrong side. So here's the right side. I really like it. And again, it's going to have to be a little bit warmer or a little bit colder uh, for me to wear this because it is DK and it's pretty, pretty warm. So it's going to be a little bit 
before I'm able to wear this. Although I was hoping to wear it around Halloween time, so we'll see. Um, so there's that. So there's two finished objects this week. And this is, of course, for myself. Both of the finished objects are for me. Um, kind of in a selfish knitting mood, which is kind of the opposite of what I'm trying to be in terms of Christmas knitting. But anyway, um, we'll get to more of Christmas knitting in a minute. In terms of uh, finished objects, that is it. So I will see you over at Whips. So now you are watching Whips. Um, I do have several items that I'm not going to show today because I really haven't made much progress in it. There's no, there's no reason why you should be looking at things that are not even, haven't done anything with. Um, one of them would be the little boxy, the little sweater that I'm working for my daughter and that has like you know, 13 inches of stockinette. So I just basically added just one more inch of stockinette. So you really, there's really nothing to show there. And then the other thing would be my husband's socks, his Christmas socks that I'm working up and um, I, haven't, I haven't touched them since the last podcast. So there's nothing to show there. So those two things are kind of on hold for now until I get more items done. So I'm going to start with um, the ones I've gotten the least amount of work and the ones I've gotten the most amount of work will be kind of in the last part of this section. So first I'm going to show you, um, I did cast on a new project and this is just in my home sewn bag. Um, this is a hat and I mentioned this last time on the podcast. This is a hat for my niece for Christmas. So there's some Christmas knitting. Yay! Um, this is in the Knit Picks Swish DK in the Sugar Plum colorway. And I showed it to you last time again. Um, this is in the Olive and Jack, I believe it's called the Olive and Jack Hat by Sarah Stevens. And basically what I've gotten done is uh, some of the, the, the ribbing here on the hat. So I have to do about two inches of this. So I still have about an inch more to do. On this before I actually get into the pattern um, and I'm making the I think I'm make, making the youth size not the baby but like the second one I think it's youth so there's that so not a whole lot of progress here <laughs> I was hoping to get this done by this podcast that didn't happen I'll, I'll kind of show you in a minute what has been taking up all of my knitting time between the color field shawl and there's another project that I've been knitting a whole lot on so there's that Hoping to make some more progress by next time. Um, my other project that you've seen a couple of times, this is uh, a bag by Stolen Minutes. And in here are the socks that I'm making for Amelia, my daughter, for Christmas. I am working them on uh, Knitter's Pride Carbons or Carbons. And this is uh, some yarn that we dyed ourselves. Um, it was a bear yarn and then we just did Kool-Aid. We did uh, red and, and green and blue Kool-Aid. So we dyed this and so I'm making her some socks out of it. So last time, um, i trying to think of where I was. I think I had already put the heel in at that point in time. So I finished the sock. She likes shorty socks, so I finished that sock. So then I just have to finish the other one, um, which I've started, you know, I'm just on the ribbing. So just on the cuff there. So not much to show. But her socks are quick because they're smaller, obviously, and they're less stitches. So there's that. And the heel is um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel in the um, Knit Picks. Oh, that's blowing it out, isn't it? Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer in the Fiji colorway. So it has a little bit of sparkle in it. Oh yeah, you can see that. So there's that. So there's that sock. So I have a, a fat half finished object here. And then I'm hoping to get this one off soon because I really want to make her another pair of socks. So I want to have at least two pairs of socks to give to her for Christmas. So I want to do that. Um, I did start a new job which I will talk about in etc. But it, as part of this new job, uh, there is a lot of downtime. So I was actually told by the owner of this place that I should bring something to do in terms of downtime. 
And I was like, okay, you don't have to tell me twice. Um, so basically I've been taking this one to work because it's just easy stockinette. Uh, last time you saw this sock, I was down here by this little marker by um, Nitty by Nature, Melissa, Nitty by Nature. So I've basically done all of this. I didn't do all of this at work. I did, yesterday I did, I think, two or three stripes at work. So that's still a lot of knitting. Um, I'm usually there uh, about six, six hours or so. So yeah, we weren't very busy yesterday. So I got a lot of knitting done. So this is in my Nomadics yarn, and it's completely blowing it out because it's a really super bright, get the cables out, super bright orange, so you can kind of see how, how that's glowing a little bit. This is Nomadic Yarns in the This is Halloween colorway, and um, I'm doing these on the Chiagus. This is a, a 40 inch, I believe. Um, in the ones, I always I do my, all my socks on a one, which is a 2.25 millimeters. The dog is scratching. Okay. And I did the heel here in a um, nitpick stroll fingering in the sour apple color. And this is kind of driving me a little bit nuts. It's one line of black, but it'll be on the bottom of my feet. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, I keep telling myself. Um, so there's that. So I have that much done. I'm pretty close to the, uh, pretty close to finishing the foot. I just need the toe. Probably gonna do maybe ten more. Maybe ten more um, rows before I get to the toe and start decreasing. So there's that, the back. And then of course um, I'm doing these just one at a time. They are in this little gobstopper ball and I don't want to like mess that up so it'll be fine. Hopefully to get these done by Halloween. Not sure if that's going to happen considering I got a new cast on um, August, August, October 1st so and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So there's that and it's just in my little homemade bag that I made here. So this project and my color field have been taking up most of my time this week because this project has to be done before October 1st because if you've been following my other episodes I have been doing um, the grocery girls a sock bash all year I've been doing basically a pair of socks according to whatever themes they've had and I've been cranking out a pair of socks every month this year. So you start on the first and then you end on the last day of the month. And so far I've, I've kept up with that. And it's the nine month. And I feel like I'm so close, yet so far. <laughs> because these socks have been taking all of my time. Um, it's a patterned sock, so it's obviously a little slower for me. These are my um, October socks. This pattern is the Rhinebeck is Calling pattern by Kay Lit Litton. And she is the crazy sock lady on um, Instagram, and she also has a podcast as well. So this is her pattern. So last time you saw these, they were by the markers. So I'll kind of give you an idea of, of where they were. Ooh, there we go. So these were by the markers last time you saw them. Um, I basically have finished, I'll show you a little bit of a close-up of the actual pattern. Let's see a little better, let's see if I can put my hand in it. Um, so this is, and I just did the patterning on the, the front of the sock. You can see a little bit better there. It's kind of a texture pattern and then there's like kind of an eyelet going down as well. I did a fish lips kiss heel on these um, using Addy Turbo Rockets. So basically I got this foot all the way done. I'm ready for the toe on here. So this one's almost done. This one as you can see has a little bit more work to do. So I basically have two days of knitting to get these done. 
Will it happen? Stay tuned. I'll be posting my progress on Instagram to see if that's going to happen. Um, I'm optimistic in saying that it is going to happen and I can keep the, the, the momentum going to finish this venture I set out on till the end of the year, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. And then here is the the back and kind of see how it's, oh, and I should mention the yarn. Um, it's Hedgehog Fibers in Fool's Gold. And look at those speckles. Like, I'm just in love right here. I'm not a big fan of yellow, but I thought it was like September, reminded me of September and fall. So I picked this color for this month. And those speckles are what's keeping me like going. I love like the pops of pink and blue. I love it. Yeah, look at the, the heel. How fun is that? Very fun. So this has been taking a lot of my knitting time because it has to get done. Like I'm, I'm hoping it gets done. I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm going to try to get as much work on them as possible and hopefully have them blocked soon so it could actually post them in the thread and be participating in that particular month. So I think that is it for works in progress. So the next section is going to be acquisitions. And I will have a special guest for that. Hello everybody, welcome to the acquisitions section of this podcast. Before we get into the acquisitions, we're going to do the giveaway first. This is for the 100 subscriber giveaway that we did on Ravelry. So just to jot your memory, it was a skein of yarn, which is Marianthe. It's going to be one of these. This is just one of my acquisitions. This is mine, but you're going to get one just like this. You're going to get um, a bar of tuft woolens, um, some stitch markers, a tape measure, some minis. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if, if I remember, I'll put a picture here of all the stuff that you're going to win. Having said that, let's ask Siri. Pick a number between 2 and 21. 6. Number 6. Let's see who that is. So there were 21 different voices, or 21 um, entries, and it picked number 6. Who is... Scroll down. Oh! Did I say that? Nope. Say it! Um, Zana W. Say it to them. <laughs> Say it louder. Um, Zana W. Zana W. Who is Susanna? You have won the giveaway. So just contact me on Ravelry with your name and address, and I'll be shipping that out to you probably on Monday. So congratulations, and thank you to all of you who participated in this particular giveaway. Um, I hope you continue watching. And um, thank you for being part of the first 100. This is great. So we're in episode six now. So I'm very grateful to all of you for watching us. So having talked, we just talked about, uh, sorry, the sun keeps going in and out of the clouds. That's why the lighting is kind of a little bit weird. Um, we just talked about Marianne, Marianthe yarns. Um, and this was the Greta base that I just talked about. So I ended up getting two skeins, one for you and one for me. And so I'm probably going to make socks out of this one. Then I also ordered another one from her. This is very, it looks very Halloween to me. It's kind of, again, the light is kind of messing it up. But it's very like bright neon green with like speckles of red, which I thought would be perfect for Halloween. And this is called Eva. So that's very lovely. I love her colorways. They're very um, colorful and they're very different. So... Check her out on Etsy. Okay, so first we're going to talk about some things I've purchased online and then we'll talk about the wool gathering stuff that I purchased, which isn't a whole lot. So I made this order from Missy from Minnesota, who is Linda, 
And I saw her, just her stuff on Instagram is great. And I think I've seen a couple of other podcasters mention her as well. So I looked her up and I saw that she was selling these little bento bags. They're basically like a one skein bento bag. And I saw this one and I love stationery. I love all that kind of stuff. And so I purchased this one and it's really great. It has a little snap. And again, you could put a skater of yarn in there. So I bought this one and she was so kind to send me an extra one. She just, she's got my number. It's Halloween themed, guys. Halloween themed zombies. Look at that. This fabric is just great. All kinds of different zombies. So this is going to be my... October sock bag. I'm gonna have my projects which I'll show you in future projects in here and I'm just gonna be able to draw from both sides to make my concurrent socks. So can't wait to use that. Thank you so much Linda. These are just wonderful. They're wonderfully made and I just love your um, the fabrics you use and she has several of these in her shop so if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself they're in her shop now. I checked this morning she does have several in there all different kinds of fabric. So these are wonderful and I am just so excited and you're too generous. Thank you so much for this. I mean, it's just perfect. I love it so much. I haven't used it yet, so I'm really excited to do that. So this was one of the purchases I've made online. Next we have um, Lolo Did It, of course, is known for her holiday hippos. So as we've talked about before, Halloween is my favorite holiday, so of course I had to get Hippo for Halloween, right? So it's a gray and it has speckles of, what, what does it have speckles of? Green, purple, orange. A little pink over here too, and black. So obviously very Halloween, very fun and exciting. And this I got in her... Um, Plush Sock Base, which is a 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 15% Nylon, and then 10% Tensile. So I've used her this base before, and I really, really like it. It's really soft, and it's just so much fun. I mean, look at those speckles. I cannot wait. So this is going to be adding to my Halloween stash of yarns. Okay. So that was it for the stuff that I purchased online. So now I'm going to show you the stuff that we bought at the Wool Gathering. Um, let's start with the, the yarn. Please. So this was a new dyer to me. And um, I've never heard of this one before. This is Deep Dyed Yarns. And this is in their Lost Girl. Um colorway in their Juju sock base, which is a 75% merino and 25% nylon. And she also had this in sparkle, but I have several sparkle so socks already, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It has kind of jewel tones, which are like my favorite. And I believe she's a local-ish dyer. I believe she's in Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this was one of them. Deep dyed yarns. Isn't that pretty? And then another one, um, she was actually marked these down quite a bit. Um, this is a new, could you grab me that card please? Thank you. This is an, also a new dyer, and I believe she's up in Akron, Ohio, I believe. Um, this is Bewitched Pigments, Fiber Arts. And I got her Erin base. See here, it's called Midnight Margaritas, and this is just 100%, it actually says 100% sustainable merino, which I'm not really sure what that entails, but I really love it. It's very squishy and it's a very fun, it's kind of blowing it out. It's a very fun green, kind of a neon-y green, not quite as bright neon, I guess it's more yellowish compared to this, but it does look like just feels like it would be margaritas, right? This color. 
So this is probably going to be a hat of some kind for myself. So Tuft Woolens was there, which you all know how much I love her. Um, I have several soaps already, so I didn't buy any soap. What I did buy are these little hand bombs and a, a lip balm. This is Cupcake, which was amazing. Amelia ended up buying one. Did you, do you like it? Oh, it's like just eating. It's like putting cake on your lips. Not literally, but it's it's very it's very true to true to taste, I guess you could say. Um, then I bought these two, the chai spice, which I have yet to. I have a soap of it, but I haven't opened it yet. So I got this to kind of try it out. And then I also have the sugar cane. So I got those two, and these are great for project bags. You know, I basically have one in each project bag and they're really handy, especially if you're working with some really sheepy yarn that usually dries out your hands. So you have that right away. And I can see the, if you see that envelope back there, that's the giveaway. So that's going home to you, Susanna. <laughs> Keep looking at it. Um, so then I bought, also bought two needles that I wanted to try out. Um, you've see, you guys have seen me mention the carbons. And this was a shorter one, so this is a 32 inch. I really like the other one that I bought. And then everybody's been like just going crazy over these needles. The Lika, I wanna say. Um, so I did, obviously did not wanna invest in a whole set if I haven't tried them out. So I just bought a fixed circular one. This is good. I'm gonna use this for a, um, a shawl that I'm going to make. So these are just uh, US size three, three 0.25 millimeters and I'm just gonna try these out see how I like them see what all the fuss is about some people really love them some people just think that they're overrated so I'm gonna try them out myself and see what I think about them so that is it for acquisitions but Amelia wanted to share something that she had made and it's kind of missing if you see there we go if you see it's usually right here um, if you look at the background. Um, so I wanted her to take it down and, and just talk about it a little bit. And she made it for me this summer for the office slash craft room. Okay, you want to talk about it? Yeah. So I made a little... Oh, you have to put it up. They can't I, see it. I made a little yarn for Mommy. <laughs> what so else do you want to say? She could decorate her office. Yeah, so and she made a... little needle. Right, but you gave it a little face, right? Yeah. So what kind of style is that? It's a kawaii yarn. So it's a kawaii yarn that you made? Mm -hmm. Yep, and that sits right up there. So we're gonna put it up there after we're done. Um, but I wanted to share that because she made for that for me this summer. So there's that. So we hope you enjoyed this section of acquisitions. Bye. So in terms of future projects, I just have one to show you this time around because I haven't really decided what else I'm going to cast on soon. So I just wanted to kind of show you this one since you've already seen my adorable zombie bag in the acquisition section. I'm going to show you what's in here. So I've had this yarn since last year, last Halloween, and it just, things got so crazy for me last fall um, in terms of writing the dissertation and researching and all that stuff that I didn't really get a chance to cast these on. So I got this from Lucky Violet. And this is their um, corn candy colorway on the li Lily Base, which is a 75 superwash wool and a 25% nylon. So that's their company. And then here is the color. And you're not going to be seeing it so well. Oh, I'm not seeing. Okay, so basically, it's all looking like it's orange and a little bit of white. There are yellows in here as well. I'm trying to get a good representation. That's not going to work. There's yellows and oranges and whites. So basically like a, a candy corn, right? Um, and you can't really see the yellow. But you got to trust me. There's yellow in there. Um, this, there we go. It's a little bit better. Can I see the yellow? So that's going to be my October socks. And I am planning on doing probably the Yorkville socks. 
by um, Mina Phillip, and um, they're part of her New York City collection. So I think I might be doing those as part of this. Oh, I'm so bummed you can't see the yellows. But I gotta still divide this ball into two because I do them um, concurrently, at least for the monthly socks. That way I can actually try to get them done on time. So there's that, and I'm gonna be trying out my new bag by Missy from Minnesota. And I am beyond thrilled to be using this bag. I mean, it's just so much fun, so zombies. So what I'm thinking of doing is probably putting this in another project bag and then having each of my balls come on the, the, the yarn to come on on each side, which would be perfect. So there's that. And welcome to Etc. This is the last segment of this podcast and all of the knitting content, at least for the most part, is done. So if you just came here for that, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I also forgot to mention thank you to returning viewers as well as new viewers. Welcome on board to this craziness. Um, so here we are. So in terms of my life, so I referred to this a little earlier in the podcast. I did get a job. It's a very part-time at the moment. Um, it's not, I guess, sort of related to my degree. I'm, I'm kind of uh, working at an antique mall, so it's kind of dealing with old things and learning about different items and how they work and what people are looking for. And So it deals with that aspect of history in terms of material culture. I'm working there right now two days a week and at least, you know, gives me something to do while I'm actually searching for, you know, if, if there's even this kind of magical job that I'm assuming that is out there somewhere. So we'll see. So at least I'm out of the house. I'm able to actually interact with people. Um, so that's kind of fun. And if you follow me on Instagram, I have been posting several pictures of different items in the store that I find interesting. And spoiler, probably most of my stuff is going to be mid 20th century, just because that's where my heart, my heart is in the 1950s in terms of culture, um, material culture specifically. So you're probably going to be seeing a whole lot of mid-century stuff uh, on there. So there's that. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was Rhinebeck. So I'm getting really jealous of everybody going to Rhinebeck this year, and I wish we could go. Unfortunately, my husband has a marathon that he got into that he was really excited about in Washington, D.C. that same weekend, so we will not be going to Rhinebeck. Um, however, I am planning on going next year, 2018, so yay! <laughs> There's that to look forward to. I have several friends who are going to Rhinebeck, so I'm really excited for them, and they're going to have lots of fun there, um, so I'll just be living through through their images and through their pictures and videos and it'll be fine. Um, something else I wanted to talk about, which is kind of like super random, but it's something I've been doing a lot lately. Um, so I finished my dissertation in July um, and there were still a lot of, uh, and my, for those of you who don't know, my dissertation was on um, Latinos in popular culture, namely looking at television and film. Um, so there were a lot of films and a lot of television shows that I did not have time to watch to, to like really analyze in my dissertation. So I have been watching um, one of the shows that I briefly mentioned in my dissertation, which was Que Pasa USA. This was a show that was on public uh, television in the 1970s, uh, specifically in Miami, and then it was nationally broadcasted. Um, so it, it's a really interesting show. Um, it's a bilingual show, so there is Spanish and English, um, there's kind of, it, it's basically looking at this Cuban-American family who came to the U.S., um, probably like the 60s, I want to say 60s, no, probably a little earlier, um, well, I guess the early 60s, because the, the show takes place in the mid-70s. But the premise of the show is looking at kind of this multi-generational family and how they're dealing with um, issues of assimilation and um, kind of making a home in this new place that seems really unfamiliar. So you have like the grandparents only speak Spanish. You have uh, the parents are bilingual. They speak Spanish and English, but mostly Spanish. And then the children speak mostly English. So you have kind of this interesting uh, generational um, 
tension between these these individuals and how they're relating to this new home. Whereas the kids were born here, they they only know well they they know Spanish and English, but they twist a lot of the Spanish words, and then the kind of the older people kind of yell at them because they're messing up the language. Um, it's really interesting. It made me think of my family. My family is uh, Cuban as well. Uh, they came over in the 1960s, or at least my mom's family did. My dad's family came over in the 70s. So it's really interesting to kind of see the f dynamics that were evident in my family uh, on this show that was from like the 1970s, how a lot of those issues and a lot of those sayings and a lot of that uh, kind of generational thing is really interesting. Um, there was one thing in particular that I thought was just like really... I thought it was only unique to my family. Um, so I always remember my mom and my grandmother were always saying, if you went to the bathroom, don't lock the door. Because something could happen to you. Like if you slip in the shower, something could happen to you and we won't be able to get to you. So don't open, you know, don't lock the door. Leave the door unlocked. So I thought that was always like a weird family thing. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. They think it's like they're really paranoid. Something's going to happen to me in the bathroom. And then like one of the episodes... They, they said the same exact thing, like, don't open the door, don't lock the door because something might happen to you and we might have to get to you. I'm like, what? That's weird. Like, is that like a weirdly, like, Cuban thing? Like, I just thought that was unique to my family and I see it on television on, on in this particular, like, fictional family. I thought it was just, like, so bizarre. So just to give you an example, like, it just brings back all kinds of memories. Um, we... My immediate family left Miami, where all of my extended family is, uh, when I was 12. So, a while ago. The 90s, you know. So, it's been a while. Um, so, it was just kind of interesting kind of seeing that dynamic again. That I haven't been around for such a long time. But, enough rambling. Um, I, so, if you're interested, Que Pasa USA. I don't know if you can get it online. I actually ordered through Amazon. But, really interesting a perspective of kind of this gen intergenerational family and, and how they kind of relate to each other and to the outside, you know, outside society um, in the 1970s. But having said that, I will close this episode now um, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>